Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well. I wanted to ask you a question uh, that uh, I hear on Wall Street a lot, and I want you to kind of put it in vernacular that the average uh, viewer on this channel uh, might understand. You cool with that? Let me give you a yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. So there's a saying on Wall Street that that the stock market is not the economy and the economy is not the stock market. What does that really mean? So, you know, the stock market is, those are risk assets. It's it's basically bets, it's gambling. And like we've seen when you have companies that have no earnings that end up trading at a 40X forward earnings or future potential pro forma earnings that we hope will hit when we estimate, yeah. you know, so it's not reality in terms of what the company's actually doing, uh, what the com company, you know, what the actual earnings are and things like that. So the stock market can be very detached from reality, as we've seen the last few years with the obscene valuations based on companies that weren't earning any money and real valuations on companies that were. Uh, and it's all because of liquidity. So mm -hmm. it's liquidity pumped into the markets, which Main Street didn't receive. Now, granted, during you know the two years of the pandemic, there was a lot of money pumped into uh, regular people's pockets through stimulus, you know, things like that. But it wasn't a lot mm. compared to what went to Wall Street. It was a fraction of what it could have been uh, compared to what Wall Street does. But um, you know, I think there's a, there's a quote out there, and I'm not sure who it is, Warren Buffett or maybe somebody that said stocks are a vote on the economy, economy where um, you know the economy is actually the barometer. Mm. Uh, or Main Street's actually the you know the barometer. So if stocks are 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 a vote. The real economy is actually the barometer, right? So uh, you have to look at what's really happening on Main Street, what's really happening in people's households with their budgets, because we're a consumer based economy. Yeah. So you can have the the economy in in a recession, high inflation, and you got the stock market doing what it did the other day, jumping uh, you know mm -hmm. these huge huge bounces. So. Uh, they're very detached and, you know, they, they do not correlate at all. Yeah. The other thing that, you know, having done this for a long time uh, is the stock market is often, in my opinion, ahead of the economy, right there. The stock market is making bets on the future, right? They're not, they're not reacting to what's happening today at Walmart or target right there. They're trying to make bets on the future. That's what price to earnings ratio. That's it's not about last quarter. It's about the future. Uh, is that, um, is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. Markets are always forward looking, uh, and markets are usually always right too. So that's the other thing, even though they're detached markets are forward looking and they're generally always, always right, especially the bond market, because again, that's where, that's where the most forward looking money that has to generate yield for annuity type investments are, are, you know, an indication of where the economy is heading and what the real appetite for risk is. And that's why the markets were so driven so high in the last couple of years was because that capital had to go into risk assets because there was no yield. Yeah, because they were getting that much. Yeah. Less than a percent. Yeah. So uh, even where they're at now, 2.6, it's relatively more attractive than the stock market. So that tells you something right there. Yeah. If those investors are going into bonds versus the stock market, I mean, that's telling you, that's telling you something. So yeah. Uh, that's kind of where we're at in terms of that whole, you know, Wall Street's not Main Street, Main Street's not Wall Street thing. Yeah. And again, we talked about this, I think it was episode one today, yield curve inversion. Want to talk about why that's important, why that's a recession indicator, uh, again, for the for the average viewer? Yeah, so that's where um, short-term bonds usually yield higher rates than long-term bonds. I mean, lower rates than long-term bonds because, you know, longer term is paid. Yeah, you better. would want more for your, yeah. Just like a CD, you know, the bank's going to pay you more to lock up your money for a longer period of time than a shorter period of time. But if you're worried and there's concerns about the economy or your, your the risk that you're taking, well, they have to raise those shorter front end bonds higher to attract capital uh, as opposed to longer term, because the investors are not certain about the longer term. They want protection for the short term. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's just a flight to safety in the short term because of, of worries about longer term recession. See, these things that we're talking about, inflation, a lot of people, we're in this instant society now, this instant economy. We've seen these huge fluctuations in markets because of all the capital, all the liquidity that's been pumped into the markets. When you throw $2 trillion in the markets, you can make big moves really fast. So you're getting these violent swings in the market and the higher the market goes, the bigger point moves it can make. 
So a lot of people are thinking these things are happening happening instantly, like we saw in March of 2020, mm-hmm. you know, the, with that V-shaped bottom. I mean, that still yeah. took a lot longer than what people thought to get back to where we were, uh, but it happened pretty quick overall. So people think inflation is going to come down in a few months. They think that mm. uh, recession is going to you know be over in a few months. Yeah, but it's going to take years, right? Potentially a year or more to get into a real recession if we get into one. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take years to get out of it. It doesn't yeah. happen overnight because the Fed's pinned. They can't bring the country and the economy out of a recession because of inflation. Inflation has to be tamed first. And that's what's so interesting, what's going on with the markets and all that right now, is for a minute after we talked about the last episode, after Powell said we're at neutral, for a minute, the markets were like, okay, they're done. We can go, we can go back to you know party on. Inflation is still 9% and it's yeah. going to take years to get that back down to two if we can ever get back down to two. That's the question. Can it get back down there? Where is it going to level out? And what does the Fed funds rate have to be to even start taming inflation and reduce demand enough in order to get it down? Yeah. Now, if they went to 10%, it could happen overnight. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a problem. Yeah. 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 So it, at the it, rate that the, we're going and that the Fed is moving to try not to destroy the economy, it's going to take a while to get inflation down and to cure uh, the illness in the economy out there right now. It's like a cancer, right? Yeah. It is. Um, it's, it's, it's wild to watch uh, what's going on. And, I don't know if you know, I'm sure you know this, but maybe it, maybe it hasn't hit. This this is the first time in 50 years that the 30-year mortgage rate is below inflation. You're essentially getting a negative rate to borrow on your home, right? It's been that way for a couple of years, but that's even in the 80s when we had high inflation, right? Paul Volcker made sure that he got the funds rate above that, which obviously brought the mortgage rates to 18 and 20%. So it's pretty wild. I mean, we have, I can think about that. We have negative rates today. We have negative rates. It's it's wild to think about. Yeah, yeah, everything's negative. I mean, when you look at earnings, you know, compared to inflation, inflation adjusted earnings negative uh, in terms of incomes, like real incomes have not kept pace with inflation. So everything has to be inflation adjusted. And when you look at that fund rate, uh, that whole neutral comment is just uh, delirious. Uh, when you look at, uh, you know, uh, you know, wages, sales, earnings, everything when it's inflation, inflation adjusted, nothing is adding up and aligning with where we are and what the markets have said lately, last, you know, last month, basically. Yeah. Uh, which again, just a bear market rally before reality sets back in and things have to reset and ultimately figure out where we're going to land. But yeah, when you, when you adjust things with inflation, it's, you get a whole different picture. Yeah. It's, it's pretty wild. Thank you for all of this, Greg. Where can people find you? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. That's where all my info lives. YouTube channel, podcast. Go check it out. Thank you, buddy.